Um, I'm pleased to speak on this bill, uh, and this bill broadly mirrors the bill which passed the House earlier this year. And I supported the bill then, and I intend to support the bill again uh, today. However, um, Centre Alliance uh, has some concerns around the measures contained in this bill, and we will reserve our position in the Senate. Um, although um, I am uh, pleased to continue talks with the minister in good faith uh, while the bill uh, pa pass uh, has passage through this House and indeed into the Senate. Um, low rainfall and rising temperatures have already crept into my electorate with dairy farmers struggling to meet the rising cost of water. And at the same time, our apple growers and in other parts of my electorate, um, they are being uh, bombarded with fierce storms and face the prospect of another year potentially uh, of, of damage from those storms. I fear that this will become the new normal, the drought, the unpredictable storms, uh, the weather that we cannot predict um, will become the new normal as we march towards a future um, where climate is changing. We need a nationally consistent approach to ensure that all primary producers are equipped to deal with the consequences of indeed a changing climate. The government says that this future drought fund is to be a long-term investment intended to build resilience, including preparedness and recovery in drought-affected communities. It aims to provide support to research, development and innovative projects, but will also deliver infrastructure projects uh, and support to improve environmental and natural resource management. And I commend those aims. But to meet these aims, the bill will facilitate the transfer of $3.9 billion from the Building Australia Fund to the proposed Future Drought Fund. The Building Australia Fund uh, provided the government with the opportunity to invest in critical infrastructure across the nation, including sustainable uh, water infrastructure programs to encourage drought-resilient communities across Australia. My concern is that the focus of the Future Drought Fund, while well-intentioned, um, could perhaps um, be decidedly narrower with a disproportionate focus on particular locations or electorates, and I don't think we want to see that. It is expected that the Future Drought Fund will under the guidance of the Future Fund Board of Guardians, grow uh, to $5 billion over the next decade, while at the same time making annual um, disbursements of around $100 million, with the first proposed to occur on 1 July 2020. Um, and I just want to say, while, while I you know, commend the qualifications and experience that's required for the people who will be um, the part-time members of the Future Fund board. I also think that it's really important that the members of those boards are geographically um, uh, diverse across Australia. I do not want to see that board um, become a board of East Coast um, uh, uh, members. It's important to remember that all parts of Australia um, experience drought and all parts of Australia um, have agriculture as a significant part of, of, um, of uh, their uh, reason for being a state, essentially, including my electorate. I often hear in this place um, that people feel that um, you know New South Wales is the food bowl. Well, can I just say that um, my electorate of Mayo also considers itself to be a food bowl, and we grow a variety of products, a variety of um, of horticulture. Yes, we do have wines too, but we also have apples and cherries and strawberries, um, and we have a significant um, dairy uh, industry as well that needs to be nurtured. Um, the disbursements uh, will be made in accordance um, with yet to be published grant guidelines and consistent with amendments moved um, by the former member for Indi in the last parliament. Detailed information around the recipients and the projects um, will be published on the department's website. The projects uh, must be consistent with the drought resilience funding plan, and the plan is a high-level framework designed to guide the future drought funds programs, and each plan will be in place for a period of four years. I welcome this longer-term approach to drought and emergency management. For too long, environmental management has been a litany of ad hoc uh, policy decisions which have only served to compound the challenges facing our farmers. What we need now, more than ever, is a long-term vision for drought resilience, 
prudent environmental management and for this government to show leadership in an attempt to tackle the root causes of climate change, something that we don't yet have consensus across this parliament, which really is quite flabbergasting. Um, proper, sustained and recurrent funding for community environment groups would be a good start. I accept that the development of drought resilience funding plans uh, may be a step in the right direction, and I take some comfort from the fact that each drought resilience funding plan will be subject to an inquiry by the Productivity Commission to determine the effectiveness of each plan. This review, I believe, is important. In circumstances where the government has foreshadowed its intention to disperse $100 million in drought projects each financial year, this is a fundamental requirement of good governance. Um, we must ensure that the funds are gone to the right people, operating the right programs in the right areas. Finally, I would like to thank the former um, member for Indi, Ms Cathy McGowan, for her amendments um, uh, in the last bill, which then became um, part of the body of this bill. Um, I think it's fair to say, um, uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge um, the goodwill of government for including uh, the former member for Indi's um, amendments into this bill. I must say, when I, when I reflect on the member for Indi's time in this place, every decision in this place she viewed through a regional lens of good governance and transparency uh, in the parliament. And these, members, um, be, these amendments being incorporated into this bill certainly go to the heart of accountable and transparent government and are reflective of her sustained efforts to advance the interests of regional and rural communities across Australia. Thank you.